Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. Um, I've been busy. I've been all over the place today working, uh, doing some stuff, taking care of mama, trying to make sure the wife is happy because when mama's not happy, ain't nobody happy. And been working in the uh, workshop. In fact, I've got some of my new racks, or actually my new rack hanging up there and actually got some more. Those are going to be giveaways to you guys for supporting the channel. So if you end up doing a super chat or if you go to my uh, um, GoFundMe and do a donation. We're trying to do some upgrades for the studio and stuff. We'll be entering you guys for the drawings that we're doing um, for that. So we'll have one tomorrow night. So the very first um, jersey rack will be actually given away. Well, actually not the first one. That's the prototype. But the very first one that's coming off that will be made will be given away. So starting Tuesday, teams can start to um, franchise tag players. There's a misconception out there. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, the Cowboys, they only got $24 million. They can't sign Dak to a franchise tag or sign him to a long-term deal. They ain't got the money for it. <sighs> um, I want you to understand that going into the offseason last year, the Kansas City Chiefs had about a million dollars of cap room. They got Pat Mahomes, a long-term deal. They signed Travis Kelsick. They signed everybody and went back to the Super Bowl. Understand the cap is not exactly the cap. The teams can do anything that they want to do. Um, it, there's a multitude of ways of doing it. The easiest is, of course, cutting people. You cut some people. You reduce some of their salary, possibly leaving dead money. So it depends on how you do it. You can cut people and say, we're not really cutting them till June 1st, <clears throat> in which case the dead money you can spread out over two years, but you can't use the money until June 1st. Or you can restructure contracts. You can go through and basically say, your base salary, we're going to make bonus money, and we're going to prorate that over the life of the contract. So that way you can... Get some cash relief now. It's just you'll be paying for that each year of the contract, you know, add voidable years. So th don't think that the Cowboys can't do anything. Don't let them sell you on the idea that they have no money to do anything. Because we went through and we did all those contracts before and ended up using more money than we actually had. But, but be that as it may. The real question you have to ask is, are the Cowboys a reload team or rebuild team. The Philadelphia Eagles right now are a rebuild team. You see that they're getting rid of, you know, trying to trade Zach Ertz. If they can, you know, get some something for him. If not, they're going to have to release him to get some cap relief. You see their center is going to be retiring. You know, they just traded Carson Wentz. They're thinking about maybe moving up and trying to get another quarterback. You know, and, and uh, in other words, they're about to ruin Hertz on top of it. They're just literally just saying, start over. The Washington football team, they look differently. We just won the division, be it a down year. If we can get a quarterback and a few more pieces, then we should be able to compete for back-to-back -back titles. So the question is, are we more like the Washington football team or are we more like the Eagles? I say we're actually maybe better than the, the, the Washington football team. We're not a rebuild team. And I know you're thinking, but you were six and ten. How do you look at that and say that we're not? It's not time to rebuild. You know, Tyron Smith is injured. Lyle Collins, who knows if he's going to come back? The defense is in shambles. Yes, this is true. But let me put it a different way. Hypothetically, just just go along with me here, okay? With Dak Prescott, the team averaged thirty-two point six points a game. With everybody else, they averaged twenty-one points a game. So that is literally 12 more points a game we got just because we had Dak Prescott. And don't act like our offensive line was good when Dak was there. Tyron Smith only played in one and a half games. Lyle Collins didn't play at all. And then you had Tyler Badish come in, and he was playing his first games ever. You had Terrence Steele, who I'm not going to say played great at the end of the year, but in comparison to when he started versus when he ended, 
He played better towards the end of it. And with all of that, the Cowboys still competed against playoff teams. Now, if, this is hypothetical, if Dak Prescott had played the season, just using the 12 points that we would have had, you know, on average that we didn't before, how many games would the Cowboys have won? Okay, so it was 24-23 when Dak went out, contrary to what you get from Skip, Skip, Skip Bayless, who say, well, the Cowboys fell behind 17-3. to Yeah, but they were leading, and Dak had him in, in, in scoring position when he went out. Cardinals, um, I don't know that we would have won that one, so 12 points would have gotten us to 22. Forget it. Washington, um, that game, I think we would have beat Washington. You know, three. I know we say it's a 12-point average, but Washington, you know, we, we have their number. We get that win. I think the Eagles, I think we beat the Eagles in that game right there. So that's two more wins. Steelers, we lost 24-19. I think we get the win on the Steelers and Washington. We lose 41 to six. Um, I'll, I'll say this much. I'll say we would have split with Washington. So that's three wins. Don't think we would have beat the Ravens. Uh, we beat the Bengals and so on. So maybe we get the Washington win. Maybe not. But that's four more wins. If we had four more wins or even just a three, if we were nine and seven and won the division, or 10 and six and won the division, would you look at the team and say that they're a complete rebuild team? Or would you say that this is a reload team? Because when you think of, say, the Pittsburgh Steelers last year, or the year before, I should say, Big Ben went out. They missed the playoffs. Now, granted, they weren't a great team coming down the stretch, but they started out 11-0. And that's because they got Big Ben. The problem for him was Big Ben started to show his wear towards the end of the season, and that's when they started going downhill. So you look at the infusion of just having Dak Prescott on your team. I believe, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. If you get Tyron Smith, even if it's only for 10 games, that's 10 games you're doing pretty good. You have to look at some of the other guys that we had that actually got experience to actually give you some depth. Lyle Collins, you know, they're saying that he'll be back and he should be okay. He's not retiring. That's another guy that's going to be, you know, helping the, the offensive line and tackle. And Tyler Badish having an off season and having a second season, I think could be pretty good. I may go through and look at saying, maybe I resign Joe Looney and have him as a backup guard. Connor McGovern showed some showed a little bit there, and you got Zach Martin. It's not ideal. You know, you may want to draft an offensive lineman to go in through there and help become the future Tyron Smith, but this offense can compete with anybody offensively. Now, the concept of saying, let's trade Dak for picks. Yeah, I get that concept. But we have 10 picks to work with. 10 picks. And if you're talking about saying, let's see if we can go ahead and reload, this is the year to get into free agency. I know the Cowboys are sour on free agents, but understand, you know, if Dak is a free agent, the sky's the limit. People will pay whatever for him. But the thing is, is when you come to that mid level, that next level of free agents, the price tag is going to go down because. There's not a lot of money to go around this year. There's not. So a guy that might be $10 million in a regular year might only be six or seven, maybe even five. So you could go through and guys will understand, listen, I got to get what I can get. You may be able to get a true starter, a good, really good player and sign them this year cheap. You do that. With the 10 picks, because mind you, we have the 10 picks in the draft. There's going to probably be three or four quarterbacks taken in the first 10 picks. That means there's only five other positions that are going to be drafted before we get up. You literally could get the best prospect in almost any position other than quarterback. 
you find an immediate day one impact player for your defense? That would be me. Although it may end up being that offensive tackle's there. Whatever. You've got a guy who instantly makes you better. You then have the 42nd pick in the draft, second rounder. And that's if you don't trade back. That could be your safety, could be a cornerback. You, know, you got Diggs in the second round, could be a defensive tackle. You have a third round pick, which ends up being 74. And you have another second round pick. You have four picks in the top 100. You can turn this team around really quick with just having Dak Prescott. And I will say, sign Dak Prescott to a long-term deal, team-friendly, and go out and get a Justin Simmons. And easily, you do that, you win your division. And from winning your division, all bets are off. It's a new season. And that's where you start and you look at it. You want to say, let Dak walk, or let's see if we can sign Dak and trade him? Go right ahead. But, guys, finding quarterbacks, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. That's why people are looking into trading for Sam Darnold. That's why the Colts took a flyer on Carson Wentz. They're not there. All right, y'all. Hope you guys are having a great night. Hope you tune in tomorrow night for our live stream, 9 o'clock Eastern. We got lively on Friday night. Good Lord, we got lively on Friday night. Who knows what will happen on Monday. I'll see you then. Peace.